Hello! Welcome to the Introduction to Proofs video for Binary Representation. My name is Professor Michael Polyuk. The learning objectives for this video are, by the end of this video, you should be able to produce a valid binary representation of a positive integer by using recursion. To remind you, here is the proof technique for strong induction. If you want to prove a statement of the form for all natural numbers p of n, you can show that p of 1 is true, and that for all natural numbers k, if you assume p of 1 through p of k, then that implies p of k plus 1. So it's like simple induction, except instead of assuming just pk, you assume everything k and before. Every natural number n greater or equal to 1 can be represented as a sum of distinct, non-negative integer powers of 2. Let's see some examples of this. 24 we can write as 8 plus 16, which is 2 to the 3 plus 2 to the 4. 48 can be written as 2 to the 4 plus 2 to the 5. And 6 and 7 can be written in this way as well. This theorem is saying that every number, so like the numbers on the left, can be written as a sum of non-negative integer powers of 2. So each of them we've written as sums of powers of 2. The non-negative part is that the exponents have to be uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so they can't have negative powers. The exponents have to be integer powers, and also you can't repeat the same exponent. So that's distinct, non-negative integer powers of 2. Now we're going to prove this theorem using strong induction, so we need to think about how does proving a case like for 48 relate to something previous. For example, how does 7 relate to something previous, like 6? So in the case of 48, we can relate it to 24. Basically, by dividing everything by 2, you'll get that you lower the powers both by 1. What about for 7? Can we do that for 7? Can you divide this by 2? Well, if you subtracted 1 from each of these exponents, your 0 would become a minus 1 which would no longer be an allowable, valid binary representation. So instead, to get the binary representation for 7, we'll go down to 6, and we'll see that, hey, we can add 2 to the 0 to this, and it won't, be, uh, it won't repeat one of the powers. So if we're currently at uh, an even stage, like 6, then to get the next one, we add 2 to the 0. But if the number we're trying to create is even, then we'll have to go back in time like to have it. So here's the major idea. If you're trying to prove that n plus 1 has a, a binary representation, if n plus 1 is odd, then you relate it to the previous one by adding 1, by adding 2 to the 0. And for even numbers, so if n plus 1 is even, you relate it to n plus 1 over 2 and you'll remove one from each of the powers. So let's see a formal proof of this. We're going to use strong induction. The base case is one, which is two to the zero. So that's a valid binary representation. Nothing interesting there. Now for the induction, suppose that one, two, three, all the way up to n have valid binary representations. And by valid binary representation, we mean it can be written as a sum of distinct non-negative integer powers of 2. So let's suppose that n is even, and our goal is to prove that n plus 1 has a representation. So I've given an example here, which is n equals 6. So we have a representation for n equals 6, like 2 to the 1 plus 2 to the 2. Now, how do we get the representation for 7? Well, all we need to do is add 1 which we can write as 2 to the 0. And since 2 to the 0 wasn't used previously, it will respect all of the rules and be a valid representation. So let's write this down. So by the induction hypothesis, n has a representation, 2 to the a1 plus 2 to the a2 plus all the way up to 2 to the ak. So this is like the 6 part. And because it's a valid binary representation, each of the exponents are non-negative integers. 
but because n is even, we ask ourselves, can any of the exponents be zero? Well, no, that would mean that you have a plus one here. So in fact, because it's even, none of the exponents are zero. So this means that when we're trying to create the representation for n plus one, we can just jam in this two to the zero. That'll be okay. So n plus one will be two to the zero plus the representation for n. This zero won't be represented in any of the AIs. So this will be a valid binary representation. All of the exponents will be integers. They'll all be non-negative and none of them will repeat. All right, now let's look at the case where n is odd. So in this case, here's an example. Let's say we're at n equals 47. We, we know all of the representations from n equals one up to n equals 47. Now to get the next one, that'll be what's the representation for 48? 48 is two times 24. And if we know the representation for 24, we can multiply the whole thing by two, increase both powers and get the representation we want. So this is the idea that we're about to use. So if n is odd, n plus one is even, and we can write it as two times m. By the induction hypothesis, m has a representation. So this is like our representation for 24. So then the representation for n plus one is two times the old representation, two times the old one, which amounts to increasing each power by one. So this is just like for 24, we had two to the three and two to the four. Multiplying this whole thing by two increases both powers by one. So let's take a moment to reflect. Why did we use a1, a2, and ak for the exponents in this proof? Is there a simpler way to prove this? Or is there a simpler way to uh, notate this? In case two, how did we know that m was between one and n? Are there multiple ways to represent a number in binary, or is the representation unique? Extract a construction from the proof that produces the binary representation of 52. You can see an example of this with a different proof in the video on strong induction. Thank you very much and have a great day.